Uh, I'm going to read from my memoir. And I'm going to say this out loud because it's going to sound crazy when I read it. Um, my mom and I both lost our memory. Um, and this is, the, my family says that this is my grandfather's um, fault. They say in my family that my mother and I owe the accidents that left us with temporary amnesia to my grandfather, my mother's father. Grandfather Nono was a curandero, a medicine man. He neglected to initiate the next generation of seers, and that is why it is said that an accident happened to mommy and later to me was an initiation all in itself. Mami is not sure whether she was nine or 10 years old when she lost her memory. She also doesn't know if she lost her memory for six or eight months, but what she does know is that things were different once she recovered. She climbed trees in her native Ocaña, she terrorized her mother, she ran up and down the mountain of Cristo Rey, just as she used to. Except now, every once in a while, she saw people appear in vapors next to those who were flesh and blood. Sometimes she could hear them speak. Other times she heard the whispers of a disembodied voice. This is a story that happens in Spanish where mommy and the tias call each other vos, the archaic thou, but they use tu with me, the informal tender you. In Spanish, our stories are slow then fast and we cackle constantly, even when we talk about the dead. I tell the tias how unusual and fantastic of a coincidence it is for mommy to lose her memory at eight or nine and for me to lose my memory when I am 23. The tias couldn't care less about my notion that this story is like science fiction. So American, this one, no? And what mommy and the tias want to talk about is what I dreamt when I had no memory. In Colombia, people live with an open door to the other world. Dreams are seen as the burrow of the great beyond. Subterranean hillways, narrowways, tunnels. In my family, we study dreams and try to decode their architecture. When we greet each other, we do so with a question. Did you dream last night? When we ask after each other, we say, do you know what so-and-so has dreamt these days? During her amnesia, Mami dreamt of her past lives, and the tias want to know whether I glimpsed at the same kind of thing. But when I think back to what I dreamt, all I see is color, the morphing colors of a sunset, the iridescent sheen of an oily surface. Sometimes I dreamt of a muted image, a cup of soup smoking in my hands, someone throwing their head back and laughter in a bar. When I tell the tias this, they are disappointed. Bueno, they say. They stare down, they pat my hand. What's important is that you are now someone who could cross between two worlds. But I tell them that I'm not, and I tell them that I can't. I tell them that I don't see things like mommy did after her accident. I don't hear voices or see ghosts, and I cannot see the future. The tias nod slowly, understanding, and it is as if this is the piece of information they've been waiting for, and they begin to look away, shifting their eyes to mommy again, looking to start a different conversation, but in between looking at me and at mommy, they say, better anyway to be normal, live your life. You'll see how quickly you forget, quicker than a witch's fart. It's a Colombian saying. Mommy doesn't remember the falling down the hole the men in hard hats had been digging out for weeks. She doesn't remember the journey through the black dark, the gust of breeze that blew against her body, the heart pit that must have been her stomach. Unlike me, what she remembers of her accident is what took place before. Mommy was inside her house, relishing the shade of the thatched roof and the breeze that swooped in through the courtyard. The sun was high outside and Mami was trying to keep her color light. She didn't like people calling her Mi Negrita, partly because Mami's older sister, Tia Nancy, they called Mi Blanquita. And Tia Nancy was the one who got the new shoes, the new dresses, the birthday parties, and Mami always got the hand-me-downs and no parties, not even a first communion. And so it must have been the color of her skin, like a burnt chicharra that was to blame. She was thinking all of this when Mami's cousins, Natalia and Marina, raced in, giggling and yelling, come Jenny, see what we found. There's a deep, dark hole in the mountain. Natalia and Marina lived across the street from Mami, right next to great-grandmother Mamaria, who was the landowner. 
Mami didn't like her cousin Natalia, who was just a year older, because Natalia was always trying to control everything. Natalia, in turn, hated Mami, because Mami was the favorite, not just in their family, but in the barrio, and she was beautiful in spite of her dark skin. Marina, who was younger than them both, was a territory that Mami and Natalia constantly fought over because whoever had Marina on their side owned the majority in the group, and owning the majority in the group meant you were the leader. I have no interest in seeing a hole, Mami said, and she began to walk away. But it's dark night inside that hole, Natalia said. Mami turned around, and she caught Natalia glancing at her sister, and then Marina said, Come, Jenny, we just want you to see. To get to the dark hole, they had to climb up the footpath to a cliff. There they saw the abandoned, dusty machinery of the men who had been there for some months digging culverts in the mountain to bring water to Cristo Rey. Beyond the machinery, they discovered the large hole. The hole looked so black, Mami stayed in place as Natalia and Marina took a step closer and leaned forward to look down. Now you. Mami said no, but Marina said, we'll be right behind you, nothing will happen. Mami took a step closer. She saw the velvet dark sides of the hole, the sound of a rustling breeze traveling up, the rich black earth far down at the bottom. And then the last thing Mami remembers is a hand on the small of her back. And there is nothing else after the feeling of the hand on the small of her back. Grandfather Nono, who was in the back, in the back hills of the family house, halfway up a tree cutting down mangoes, felt Mami's soul calling to him at that moment. That's how Nono described it to Mami and the tias. Verbatim, they tell me, the sound of a soul calling to him, that's what he said. Nono looked into the distance, listening for a moment, and then he jumped down and bounded up the hill, past cocota and avocado trees, rushing out into the dirt road. Natalia and Marina were standing quietly across the road, leaning against the wall of their house, looking down. Nono asked them, have you two seen Jenny? They looked at each other, and then Natalia said, no, we have not. Nono turned to Marina, have you seen Jenny? But Marina shook her head. Nono then rushed into their house to ask Moncho, his wife's older brother, if he had seen Mami. Moncho said he was sure he had seen the three of them, Mami, Marina, and Natalia, walking out together up the dirt path. Ask them again, they know where she is. Marina and Natalia denied seeing Mami again, but after a while, Marina said, I think I saw her head up that hill, but she was all alone. Nono scrambled up the mount. Then he stopped at the crest, trying to hold on to the feeling of the call. When he opened his eyes, he thought about the hole. He felt sure that's where Mami was, and instead of re running to investigate the tunnel from the top, he turned around and headed back down as quickly as he could and bolted through palms and tall grass and maguey and borrachero trees to the other opening, the end of the tunnel that cut horizontally through the mountain and through which he could walk in like it was a cave. Nono didn't have a light, and for a long time he stepped in absolute darkness. He knew there might be snakes, and he was alert, listening for a rustle. In the absolute dark, Nono said he felt Mami's life snuffing out. Ahead, he saw light falling in a beam from above ground, and he sprinted toward it. There was a body lying there, very still, and as he got closer under the sunlight, he saw Mami, face down, lying in a dark pool of blood. The pool of dark red expanded underneath her. Nono bent down and turned her over. Her whole face was slick and red. Breath bubbled out of her nose. He checked for a broken neck and hoisted her up and ran with her in his arms, ran as fast as he could through the dark cave, up the hill, down the dirt path, into his house. And there he set her on a table and rattled his bottles of remedies looking for holy water, which he used to wash the blood off her face so he could see the deep cuts he needed to pray over in order to stop the flow of blood. Thank you.